I hear myself. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wrong headphones. Wrong headphones. All right. I can hear myself. I'm sorry. I'm tardy. Okay. I'm a busy guy. I have a life. Got this wife. I, I got stuff, gym, and consultations and stuff. So please forgive me. Bear with me, y'all. It's, you know, it's a lot. I do a lot of stuff. So let's get right into it. I'm not even going to waste y'all time. Uh, I am Q, Zakiba, the highlights. Uh, Esoteric, hey. Corlock, hey. Macbone, Lord Vell. All right, all right, all right. Oh, yeah, man, listen, man, white man, you know, White man, he's like, he, he likes me. He's like, you know, I like you, Sly. I'm a, I like you. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> so let me get into this real quick. Um, overall, if I had, okay, there's two things I want to I wanna base this and talk about the series. So if we have the season finale, I felt was underwhelming and rushed. Okay, you know how we got mad at that last episode of Power, that last season of Power with with Ghost, and we felt they rushed it because they only had a six episode slot and they just trying to cram everything in. This is exactly what happened here. Now everything I predicted for season two, half of it, they crammed it into the season finale. Okay, so now if we go off the entire episode arc, the series was, a, it was good. Okay, of course they're gonna green light this thing for season two, of course. It was good. It was good. It's a nice departure from the drug dealer shows. Let's be honest, I can only take so much of Tommy and, and the drug dealing. I can only take so much Snowfall, even though it's, Snowfall is brilliantly written, I can only take so, so many drug dealers. Okay, so this was a nice departure from the drug dealing urban shows that we've been inundated with for the last six to seven years, okay? So that alone is why you should watch the Bel Air for just a change of pace. But the season finale, underwhelming. So let's get right into it. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not complaining, man. I'm not complaining. Tony Anthem's in the house. Last episode of Samurai Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you hate that shit? Oh, another, like, uh, who, 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 I don't know who used to watch this on, on uh, Cartoon Network. Symbionic Titan. One of my favorite cartoon shows. And they gave us a cliffhanger. Didn't even give us season two, man. Symbionic Titan. That was a great cartoon. Great cartoon. Written by Gendy Tarkatov. Powerpuff Girl, Samurai Jack, that guy. He, Symbionic Titan, man, they left us on a, on a cliffhanger. I was like, oh, man, y'all gonna do us like that? <laughs> didn't, even give us, didn't even give us season finale. Like, they just stopped. <laughs> All right, so let's get into... Oh, well, let me... And one more point. Uh, in regards to this, this, this uh, season finale, I will say this. Comedians, if not are the best actors are the most versatile actors. Comedians, if they're not the best actors, they are the most versatile. And you'll see why when they introduce Will's father. Now, everything I thought, I thought they're gonna wait till season two to bring Lou in. Sure enough, Lou shows up. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, come on. All right, so let's go, let's go. Let us go into it. Let us go into it. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. They're at Viv's art show or art display. All right. Phil throws a lavish uh, exhibition for Vivian's uh, artwork. Okay. And um, Phil and Will have a heart to heart. Phil tells Will, hey, I don't regret nothing taking you on. You know, and Will's like, I'm sorry, you know, for causing so much trouble. Okay, okay, okay. Ivy and Hillary, they link up and talk shop. Jazz and Ivy are in, they end up flirting somehow with in front of Hillary. 
He, uh, Jazz shakes her hand and does the Ray Charles with the wrist. He grabs her wrist. And Hillary's like, right? Carlton, the most, po- I think it's probably one of the mo- more poignant, um, the more, the more the poignant scenes. Carlton is looking at a picture of Will with his crown, with the crown on. Okay. Ashley walks up and asks, are you jealous? He says, no, I just don't, I, I don't understand what it's about. Ashley says, you should have watched the throne more closely. That was brilliant. No, she says, you should have watched the throne a little closer. It was brilliant. Brilliant. And then Carlton just sat there and thought about the shit like, yeah, you should have, nigga. <laughs> The keys were in your hand. Okay. So then Phil meets uh, his frat brothers. Phil says he's spending more time with his family. Lisa is still mad at Will. Jazz tells Will to tell Lisa how he really feels. Uh, Will then tells Lisa he loves her. She then is about to return the same sentiment, but then she runs off. The next morning, Jazz and Hillary are in bed together. She's racking up Phil's credit card bills, living at the, at the hotel because... Dad still doesn't know that Hillary is broke and that Hillary owes Kylo 50 grand. Okay. Jazz tells Hillary to look at Ivy as a partner and not a lifeline. Because Hillary's always like, can we collab? Can we collab? Can we collab? Right? Will knows that Jazz and Hillary are together because he calls both of their phones and Jazz is like, I'm, Hillary's not here. He's like, man, I know she, she's right there. I know she's right there. I saw you at the, at the, at the, at the soiree. So then he, then, uh, will ask Hillary for, for help with, with Lisa. All right. Phil makes father and son time with Carlton at the racetrack. Ashley then tells Carlton and will that Jeffrey's stuff is gone. And then the kids begin to suspect that Phil fired Jeffrey. Jeffrey's coming back. I told y'all season two is coming back. He's too, he's too integral of a part. He's too, uh, made, too major of a character to just be written off the, so hastily. All right. Uh, Reed, played by Michael Ely, the swarmy uh, art con- connoisseur that kind of put Hillary on. Reed and Viv meet up. She thanks Reed for helping her get the fellowship award. She wants to work with Reed to help him discover up and coming artists. Okay. Reed asks, well, what about your husband? She tells Reed, her and Phil have worked past their issues. Boy, I tell you women ain't shit. Lisa agrees to meet with Will. Lou shows up. Ding dong. Wait, so the scene goes, you see a car pull out of the gate. And then you see a black, a blacked out Corolla pulled into the gate. And then... It's fucking Lou. Lou played by Marlon Wayans. <laughs> now you think this would sound bad, but no, this was a great cast. This was a great casting. Okay. Marlon Wayans put his foot into this role of Lou. I felt Lou. Okay. We're going to get into it. Lou shows up to the house. Lou says, Jeffrey said, Will wanted to see him. Lou just, Lou got out of prison three years prior. He didn't want Will to see him in prison. Jeffrey told Lou that Will needs him. Lou says he's a changed man. Same, same Lou arc played by uh, Ben Vereen on, on the comedy. Okay. Phil. Uncle Phil was Lou's attorney. Phil was Lou's attorney. Carlton breaks into Phil's office and opens the report and grabs the report on Lou. Carlton tells Will that Lou came by. So Lou and Phil are nose to nose. He says, come back later. He says, all right. Right. So he's, he's channeling that West Philly, right? <laughs> so Marlon is, is spot on with the West Philly thing, right? Uh, Carlton gives Will the report. Will confronts uh, Phil and Viv. Phil tells Will Lou conned an old man. He conned and beat an old man out of money. 
Vivian uh, wants Jeffrey back. She says, I didn't agree to that. So Jeffrey's coming back next season. Okay. Here's Lou's backstory. Lou's father was a gangster. He was killed in jail. Lou's mom died at the age of 19. Lou had a prior for stealing a car when he caught his second case, which compounded his time, which is why he served so much time because he had a prior from stealing uh, a vehicle, vehicle theft. Okay. Lou didn't have a second chance and his mom cut him off. Okay. Um, Phil begins to describe Lou as manipulative and volatile. Okay. Will then calls Vi and says Lou's in town. He asks Vi, why didn't she tell him he was in prison since the age of four? Will wants to talk to him. Okay. Will wants to talk to, talk to Lou. All right. Hillary gives Ivy a uh, photo shoot tips and pointers. Hillary then lends her services to Ivy and convinces Ivy to buy out Kylo, the social media house, thus freeing uh, up Hillary out of her contract, or her debt, her kill fee to Kylo. That's smart, okay? So then Lou shows up, he shows back up. And then Viv, Viv tells Lou, act like father of the year. She doesn't mince words with him. She says, if you hurt that boy, do whatever, I will kick your ass out of my house myself. And he's like, yeah, you still got the West Philly in you, right? Because they're all from West Philly. They all grew up pretty much together, except Phil, all right? Will and Lou talk. Now, this exchange, I would say, um, not as powerful as the one exchange in the comedy between Will and Lou, uh, played by Ben, ben Vereen. That trumps, the, I, I don't think, you can't touch that. You know, the whole, how come you don't want me, man? Like that was, you can't, that was, that was perfect, right? Like if you were a, a child who wanted to know why your father did, you felt that scene, you know, if you didn't have a father in your life and you was like, man, how come you don't want me, man? How come you don't want me? <laughs> you felt that shit. Even if you had a daddy, I was like, oh shit, okay? So this exchange here was good, but not great. All right, good, but not great. So, <laughs> Will and Lou talk. Lou tells Will he didn't want him to see him in prison locked up because, uh, and then Will says, what about what I needed? It messed with his head thinking he was with another family or he was dead. Lou then begins to tell Will seeing his own dad locked up, broken and cold like a shell of himself. He said every month visiting his father, it was worse. Lou said he didn't want that for Will. He deserved better. It's a fair point. It's a fair point, right? I'm like, okay, okay, Lou, okay. But let me just say this. The hype over this is bullshit, right? Like all this drama, how they written this out for Lou, it's, 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 it's bullshit. It's not even like how they made it out to be, y'all. You, you, you watch the episode, you be like, that's it? So he was, he was in prison for 10 years. He got out three years ago. He's been hustling and trying to get on his feet. I don't know, you know, what man wants to not be around his kid while he's not on his feet. I don't, and before the whole hoop love, let's keep it a secret from Will. Will doesn't need to know. It's like, okay, I thought this guy was a murderer, killer, rapist or some shit. This dude just went to prison for conning some old man some, for some assault shit. He did a dime. He got out three years prior. That's pretty much it. So the way they written the hype Will uh, Lou to be the super uber bad guy, no. Ben Vereen's Lou was much, much worse uh, because he was the trucker. He was, um, he, he was, you know, was a narcissist. He was always on the go. He was always breaking promises to Will. So that resonated more in the comedy than this here. This is like, oh, this is the best y'all could do, right? It was overhyped. They oversold it with the Lou. If you watch this, this, this season, you're like, oh my God, Lou, can't let Lou know. No, not Lou, 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 Lou. It's like, oh damn, Lou must be a, mo a motherfucking former kingpin or some shit. You know what I'm saying? No. Lou was a, a, a too big criminal. That's it. Okay, but let's get into it. Let's get back into it. So then Lisa is stood up because she's waiting for Will at the coffee shop. Will and Lou begin to reminisce on... Will's early memories at the age of three and four, going to a Phillies game, meeting Iverson. Um, 
So then Will asks the question, well, what happened? So then Lou tells Will, Vi put the pressure on me to hustle. She put the pressure on me, on my back, 24-7, 365. Will then gets offended because you can't talk bad about mama. Hollywood is watching. Will instantly gets offended. He stands up. He's like, you ain't gonna talk about my mama like this. You, how dare you have a differing opinion of how I see my mama, right? This is, once again, this is one of the gripes that men have that they don't even bother having anymore because it's like, you're going to raise this kid and put whatever narrative in his head. It doesn't even matter what I say or what my, my point of view is. My side of the story doesn't matter. And a lot of men got used to that and understand. So when he, because Will heard a differing opinion, you know, you don't, you don't even uh, respect the fact that this is how Lou is seeing it. Once again, Hollywood is watching. All right. Um, Lou tells Will that Vi was one of the worst decisions of his life. They're nose to nose. Lou then grabs Will by the throat. God damn, I felt that shit. <laughs> Cause Will was talking to Lou like he's a nigga on the street, like he could whoop him. And you know, so you would never talk bad about your wayward mother, but your wayward father, you would try to put hands on your father, right? If you, so you say you got a deadbeat mother, deadbeat father. You would never talk to your deadbeat mother and treat your deadbeat mother the way you talk to your and treat your deadbeat father, especially if it's a son. Right, the son would actually go after the father, but never the mother. Hollywood is watching. Lou grabs Will by the throat before Phil comes in to break it up. Lou says, I didn't come here to get disrespected. Will says, you ain't earned no respect. Mm. Mm. I was like, ooh, the back and forth, that was good, okay? I'm like, okay, okay, and mind you, Sean is killing it as, as Will, uh, as Lou. And once again, comedians, if not the best actors, are some of the most versatile actors. So Marlon is con very convincing in his role as Lou. Okay? He got the beard. He's got talking to kind of gruff. You know, he's aged a bit. He's not laughing and kiki ha ha as he, as he normally is. So I felt him in his role. So then Will says, would he have shown up if he wasn't looking for him? So Lou's kind of stuck, like, that's a good question. Will then spazzed on Lou. And then Lou says, now look here, son. He says, don't call me son. You ain't earned that shit. Okay. He tells Lou he doesn't want to see him again. He says, go find a ditch and go lay in it. Then he called him a bitch ass nigga. <sighs> called his... His daddy, he ain't seen in 10 years, a bitch ass nigga. You would never call your deadbeat mother, uh, uh, I don't know, a bitch ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? You, no, no son, no child would ever talk to their deadbeat mama the way they would talk to their deadbeat father. Hollywood is watching. Lou says he came to make things right with Will. Lou then leaves. Will is angry with Phil and, and Viv. He says they abandoned him and Vi. Because everyone's still mad internally, secretly, um, because of everyone's kind of still low-key jealous of, of, of Vi's and Phil's success. Sound familiar? Right? Jeffrey is the only one that has access to the car that Will took. So mind you, the 17-year-old kid, he's upset. He takes one of their cars with two, two duffel bags and goes to run off. Like, bruh, you, the car that you in, you're in is their car, is their vehicle. Where are you going to go? You don't have any gas money. Where are you going to go? Right? And so they're trying to find him, locate him. Jeffrey is the only one that has the voice activated GPS on their vehicles. Okay. Carlton then go at, ask Phil why, why Jeffrey isn't returning their calls. Because they're trying to call Jeffrey. Jeffrey's not returning their calls. Carlton goes to look for Will. He goes to Lisa's. Tells Lisa what happened. So he's like, yo, I need him. Yo, please help me find him. So Carlton has a moment of uh, vulnerability that he really, that he admits that he needs Will. Okay. So they agree that she agrees to go off and then go help him. Okay. Vi was the one that decided to keep Lou out of his life. Sound familiar? Hollywood is watching. 
Jazz then finds Will at the top of, uh, top of uh, like a lookout mountain over the city, like on one of the, on one of the canyons. And then Jazz tells, uh, he tells Will, he's like, look, this is, this is one of your moments, your defining moments. What are you going to do? Where are you, where are you going to go to? As they pan out and looks over the city. And then Will's crying. It's a bit over the top, right? And there's your season finale of Bel Air. Underwhelming. This episode was once again rushed, forced, packed, too packed with too much stuff going on. It needed more time to flesh out. You could have saved Lou. You could have given Lou a better backstory, a more grittier backstory. He's a two bit criminal. He did a dime in prison and he's, you know, he's a hustler, like not even a good hustler. Right. And, and of course the mama decides, Hey, you, it's best that you not be in my son's life. Let me get to these comments and I'm gonna wrap this up. And uh, I gotta go see Morbius uh, in about an hour. And I gotta come back and do that, do that uh, movie review. So let me get these comments real quick. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, man, symbiotic Titan, man. People don't, they don't understand. They don't understand. They're like, what's that? Like, you just, it's okay. It's not okay for you to know. One Piece is the goat. Yo, I, I love, uh, I, I, I miss Big O. Um, symbiotic Titan. Like all the futuristic dystopian robotic shit. Like I'm into that stuff. Ashley trouble making ass. Yeah, Ashley's a fucking hater, man. Red Seas and Blues will have. Hey, you never emailed me, bro, about the uh, the topic you wanted to talk about. So Maurice, hey, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. This show is what? Come on, man. Here we go, man. This show is white liberalism aimed at advancing liberal propaganda into the black community. This show is trash. Okay, well, I mean, obviously you can't find anything worth. It. The meat, man. Pick out the meat. Spit out the bone, bro. I think, wow. I mean, compared to what? Power? You watch Power, don't you? You watch Snowfall, don't you? What the fuck are you talking about? Come on, man. Respectfully. Um, Coming from a guy with a strained relationship with his pops, I kind of felt the way it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, as you should. But once again, of course, they had to make him a deadbeat. Why? <laughs> Somebody has to be a bad guy. <laughs> Uh, listen, they had a lot to, they had a lot to get done in this, in this season. I get it. You know, hopefully the network gives them more episodes to play with and hopefully these characters are fleshed out a little bit more, but I, I think they ruined a, a really good chance with Lou. You know what I'm saying? Once you watch the episode, you have to watch, I would say watch this season because the way they hyped Lou up, Lou was like, he was like Thanos, man. And he shows up and he's like, he's like Ultron or something. She's like, ah, oh, come on. This was. And he had us all hyped this whole season about Lou. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, seven sounds about right. Okay, 6.5. 6.5. Oh, great. Right, eight out of 10? Shit. Okay, I guess we watch a different series. I'm not giving that shit no damn eight. <laughs> but I mean, hey, you know, it's all good, though. It's all good. It's all good. Hey. Hey, stranger. Um,. Simply because it's characters I relate to, which is a very hard thing to, right. I, I, like I said, I like the idea of a grounded, uh, uh, reality. I think what I think I would like to see is more former comedies get rebooted into grounded realities, right? Could you imagine, um, what's up? I don't know. Could you, could you imagine, um, what's the TV show? Eddie Winslow and the daddy. Could you imagine that in like Chicago as a, re a grounded reality? What's the TV show, y'all? Family, Family Matters. You know, could you imagine a grounded reality-based Family Matters? I would tune in for that. Daddy is a fucking cop in Chicago. Can you imagine a, a, like a, a, a grounded, realistic Urkel? Like, you know what I'm saying? He'd be like some Manosphere motherfucker on, on the internet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I want to see more former comedies get grounded into rea rebooted realities. I would love it. I, I, I think it's a wave. I think Hollywood has a, an opportunity here to jump on this. Extend the IP. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, so. Man, I'm telling you, listen, think about all your, all your, all your, the comedies that we watched growing up 
and then put that in like a really grounded reality like like in today's terms like it would be it would be epic Angela says, absolutely not leaves. Nostalgia quit. Re- hey, I'm sorry, boo. It's what Hollywood does. When they run out of ideas, they reboot. Okay. They redo the canon. They reboot, refresh, reimagining. That's what they call it. Re- a reimagining. I would like to see a grounded family matters. That'd be dope. Yo, Dynamis, where you at? Wait, I think they did Jeffrey like that. So if off screen, if the actor asks for more money, studio can can leverage, make him uh, uh, make him off screen or write him out. They normally don't get funky until after the numbers come out. So they already had him playing for so many episodes. Like, cause if you go into the IMDb and look up all the cast, everyone's listed for so many episodes. So he was already pre going to be in like only five or six episodes, but definitely he's coming back for season two. Like, you know, so I hope they explore his backstory, his upbringing, you know, his issue with his, his son that he abandoned. That would be a nice little touch, you know, cause in the comedy, we got a little bit of Jeffrey's backstory. He was a former uh, Olympic athlete that failed at the Olympics or some shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, give, give Jeffrey flesh out his character some more. Definitely. But I think Lou was a wasted opportunity. Lou was a wasted opportunity. He could have been a recurring bad guy. You know what I'm saying? With some, with some real grit and bite. But I think they, they wasted that, that character. But once again, played flawlessly by Marlon Wayans. So shout out to Marlon Wayans. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. Peace.